We have an anonymous $5 donation. Greetings from Berlin. First GDQ I get to see live, and I'm not going to miss a single run. Thanks to all the runners and everyone involved in making this awesome event. Shoutouts to all the couch groups so far. They're so supportive. I need friends like you guys. An anonymous $5 donation. No better way to celebrate the 4th of July than to have the Rack Daddy himself, Zem, sing the national anthem. We have an anonymous $10 donation. Hi, SGDQ. Greetings from Austria. Save those mice, but kill the animals. And just as a reminder, we do have an incentive coming up for Mega Man 8. It is to play the game on the Sega Saturn as opposed to the PlayStation. The Sega Saturn version is more difficult and has two more bosses, Cut Man from Mega Man 1 and Wood Man from Mega Man 2. So get those donations in. We have about $700 out of the uh, 3000 that we need for that. So let's make that happen. We have $20 from Selenia. Not sure why I'm awake, but at least I have top-notch entertainment. Love what you guys are doing, and good luck to all the runners. We have $25 from Francisco. I'm on break at work and couldn't be happier to donate for a great cause. I'm watching the Speedy Gonzales run and it's great. Gracias to the runner as well as GDQ for giving us a full week of entertainment. Let the money go to runner's choice. We have an anonymous $5 donation. Greetings from France and kill the animals. 
We have $5 from B Show. Hello, everyone. Great event for a great cause. Keep up the good running. We have $15 from KQUED equals Volvo. That's an interesting name. Hello from London. Fourth SGDQ. Loving it as always. Thanks for all the great work you do. Huge shout out to the tech team behind the scenes. Save the animals. We have $10 from Laser Bones McGraw. Woke up early just to see some high quality video game speedruns. That is too bad because we are playing Flintstones. <laughs> We have $50 from No Relations to JFK. Let's have a fiesta, an American fiesta. Let's sing the national anthem. Love the very American dressed American in the audience. We have. Good to go. All right, quick roll call before we begin. I am Prince Leaf, and with me is the second time now. He's been with me for every time I've ran this game, so I appreciate him coming back. Um, I'm going to start, and the intro doesn't start yet, but after I hit it, I'm going to control Fred, and that's when time will begin. So, ready, and start. So, this is Flintstones 2, The Surprise at Dinosaur Peak. It's a sequel to The Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. It's by the same developers, and, you know, they made the game look exactly the same as the first one. So... Not much different, like, in this game you get to control both Fred and Barney instead of just Fred. Um, this is the most, this is probably the most impressive, this is probably the, uh, the, the most impressive NES game you'll never own, uh, just because it's so incredibly rare and valuable. Uh, it was only ever released, I think, as a, uh, as a game for Blockbuster, so it never had actually a commercial release. Yeah, there's nothing that really proves that, though. I don't know how I got my copy, but I've had it for several years. I got it when I was five years old in a trade from with my neighbors, so I think we all know who won that trade there many years ago. And nothing really to say about the first level. We're already finished with it. Um, the story of this game, um, Pebbles and Bam Bam wandered off from Bedrock, and Barney and Fred go to look for them, but when they find them, the volcano erupts and traps them on the other side. Um, but instead of just walking around the volcano, Fred and Barney don't know 3D, so they have to take the long way around. Which gives us this game, obviously. There's lots of uh, little bits of speed tech that you see through here. Um, for instance, when he's playing as Fred, uh, you see that he, more often than not, will try to uh, jump up into um, the corners of platforms so that he can immediately pull himself up. Um, the two characters have uh, slightly different abilities. So, like for instance, um, Barney is shorter so he can uh, have lower clearance underneath obstacles. Uh, Fred can, uh, Fred has a, a club that he swings while uh, Barney shoots a projectile. Um, Fred's actually able to charge up um, the club, which allows him to do much more powerful attacks, as you see right here in this fight.
So that's kind of an interesting little addition right here. Uh, the level ends the moment that you collect the crystal at the end of each stage, uh, and he kind of positioned himself to be able to grab it the moment that it appeared. Yeah, I was listening for a sound cue, but I kind of um, was a little late on at that time, so I grabbed it a little late. But I mean, it's it's a, like two frames difference. I mean, if you wait for it to go to the bottom, that's like a second. Also, special thanks to Author for telling me this about the sprites being small. I, I used to jump over that enemy with Fred, and I was always hitting him and being very upset because I missed it every time. And, you know, uh, with the run coming down to literally seconds between my sum of best and world record, every second counts. And I'm going to collect this for safety's sake. So we're coming to an auto scroller section with the minecart, so you can go ahead and read a donation or two. We have $50 from Fal. Fudge. I missed the Harry Potter run. Redo it? Ah, just kidding. Love you guys and keep up the good work. We have $5 from Lasp. Great speed runs as always. Gonna keep me busy while at work. And as always, kill the animals. Ooh, I hit the jump. Nice. So... Yeah, you can go ahead and explain it. Yeah, so this fight right here, the intended uh, solution is to um, hit those rocks that are falling back at him, but there's a very small, like, two-pixel window right next to him uh, where you can actually hit him directly. So I'm doing this blindfolded. I don't have a blindfold out, but I'm not looking at the screen. Just to make it more exciting because it's an auto-scroller. We have $15 from Too Lazy. Hi, it's cool to see such amazing players break amazing and not so amazing games for an awesome cause. Also, shout outs to my Discord crew and Pathfinder sucks. Money goes towards saving speedrunning, aka killing the animals. Man. Yeah, I, I messed it up because I got cut in. All right, so so uh, he he's given that one shot. Um, one of the reasons why this isn't one of the sort of tricks that he wants to keep trying over and over is just because of the fact that every time you die in this game, uh, you actually lose a little chunk of your uh, power bar and your uh, sub weapon. We'll call it ammo, um, and he's going to have to recollect those in order to account for the death that he took, which is not a huge issue, but um, something that he definitely doesn't want to handicap himself further for. Now, I wasn't intending on dying, but the donator, I was asking for quiet, but um, he kind of interrupted me. But, I mean, I wouldn't say it's his fault. I asked for, like, cutting on it, but... So, I'm sorry. Like, the auto-scroller is sound. Um, I was kind of matching up with that. Um, here, this level, this is actually a very simple part of the game. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's the middle part of the game. It's one of the easiest levels. Um, there's nothing really to say about it. It's just straightforward. I'm switching between the characters because I think Fred is actually a, a bigger sprite than Barney, and having Barney out reduces lag in some parts of the level, like this next part here. Oops, I didn't hit start. Here, I want to jump up and get this enemy before he gets me. This other one will not hit me, but he's still there. And so this boss is going to um, end with... Uh, he's going to pick up a, a sub-weapon that he's going to use in a later stage uh, and then finish off the boss of this before we enter into the giant house stage. So the monkey boss is pretty easy. You just hit him three times with the charge, and then one without a charge will finish him off. The way the, the attacking works with the club is a fully charged does five damage, and the bowling ball I just picked up does five damage as well, but I'm only going to use that as a safety strat. Um, that monkey has 16 health, so I hit him three times, and I hit him once with the uncharged to finish him off. So this level is a kitchen, sort of, and you're kind of climbing on cabinets and tables and stuff. Like here, you're jumping in a toaster, and I jumped it too early. 
All right. Oh, I hit the jump okay. And these frogs are random. You want to try and hit them before they hit you, and I made it through there okay. Oh, I jumped too early. So I was trying to damage boost. If you hit the enemy while in the water, you fly up a little faster than jumping. The mechanics in this level are very bad. Like for 1994, it's if it would be passable if this was one of the early titles in the NES, but not 1994. They should have figured that out by now. Yeah, the water mechanics in this are very strange. It's it's a a, a strange crossover between swimming and jumping that doesn't do either of them properly. Oh, I mistimed it. I was trying to time it so that I would hit the spider at the same time he shot the web. Because for some reason, if you hit him at the same time he's shooting it, you'll do double damage. Whereas a five, a five damage would go to just four. I can't get it to happen very often, but, you know, I'll take that. So this stage is a huge door maze. There's a, a lot of ghosts. Um, you can't kill them directly, but you can stun them temporarily so that you walk through them. Um, there's a few little shortcuts that you wouldn't know about. For instance, um, a lot of times uh, if you're walking over a gap, if you were to fall into it, uh, you'd die instantly. But he's actually going to jump into one specifically later uh, that's going to uh, take him forward through the stage, skip, uh, I think it's two rooms. Oh, I hit the jump. You don't get a very big window to make that jump over the ghosts there. And here I'm going to fall down this pit, but it actually takes you further in the level. Also, fun fact about this level, um, some TVs it looks purple or like pinkish, and sometimes it's dark purple. I don't know why that is. Oh, wow. I did not expect to do that. Yeah, for so this boss fight, uh, every time that you hit the witch, uh, she appears somewhere else on the stage after spawning a few bats. You have to kill the bats off the screen. Um, so he's going to use a combination of uh, charged hits when he can, uh, as well as the bowling ball to try to uh, minimize the number of cycles he has to do this in. Oh. I have to take an extra hit because I didn't get a I didn't get a fully charged one. I accidentally fired off the bowling ball before I went in the door, and that kind of messed everything up. So again, I was trying to climb up there to get the gym quicker than just waiting for it to fall. And so here we have another auto-scroller. All I have to do is get up to the top right of the screen and then I have to do absolutely nothing. I can take my hands off the controller and just wait there. I'll take two hits maximum, so another time for donations. We have an anonymous $700 donation. I only sport high quality causes. Best of luck with the run. We have a $10 donation from Nick Seen. Hey guys and girls of SGDQ, I'm a long time watcher and I love what you guys are doing, not only for Doctors Without Borders, but for the whole gaming community. Keep up the great work. Greetings and love from Germany. We have $50 from Jason. Greetings from Snow Halation. Love watching this every time. Keep up the great work. So from this point on, for the rest of the run, uh, I guess they finally got serious about level design because the entire game completely steps up the uh, the platforming aspect. Um, a lot of the jumps for climbing this mountain right here uh, are, are quite a bit more difficult than anything you've experienced uh, up to this point in the game. <clears throat> and then combined with that, uh, the final stage is just a complete mess uh, as far as being able to do it quickly. So, Oh, I got sniped. Usually you can manipulate the bird to not hit you, but I was a little late up there, so he's not going to be there anymore. And now we come to the worst boss fight in this game. 
I want him to stay there. But I mean, if he jumps, I, I need him to stay in this, or I need to, okay. Oh, wow, okay. And wow, I messed it up because I jumped away too early. So now I want him to be here, but it'll probably, okay. So I got a good pattern. If I would have hit him, that would have been the best pattern. But, you know, I messed it up. But I mean, if he had gone back down to the far right, that would have wasted so much time because you got to wait for him to jump into the hole that you were in to, you know, go to the next level. A lot of the platforming in this stage can be very counterintuitive, like one of those early jumps that he just did. Uh, there were spikes right above it. If he had jumped up, uh, it would have killed him. Um, but if you just walk off the platform, he'll grab the ledge on the other side. So there's a lot of uh, little things that it does here. This right here will be a sequence, uh, sequence break that he does. You're supposed to wait for the rock to fall. Uh, but he jumped straight over to the other rock that was sitting there. I'd say that trick looks a lot more difficult than it really is. Sure. You can read a donation. Oops. My jump input didn't go off or something. We have a $57.77 donation from Tapatio J. Uh, looking forward to another great event this year. Sending some good luck to my boy Leaf on his Flintstones run. And get that wheel skip. Runner's choice for the incentive. Thanks, Jay. Glad to see or glad to hear that you're up at 4 a.m. I'll put it towards kill the animals. So something weird about this caveman. For some reason, he dies in two bowling balls, but if you hit him with two charge shots, he doesn't actually go off the screen. It's the only time that I literally have no explanation as to why that is. So that, uh, that donation comment actually referenced a trick that's coming up in the last room. Uh, I think it's something that Princeleaf will probably say looks a lot harder than it really is, but it's an incredibly challenging... I wouldn't say that, because in the practice room, I wasn't able to get this trick every single time. So, so it... Yeah, so this stage, you're being chased down by this uh, giant red wheel of death. Um, it will kill you instantly on contact, uh, and if you really don't know how to navigate all of these blocks properly, it's... I mean, it stays right up on you, so uh, he's going to be probably barely staying ahead of it most of the time. Uh, he gets a little bit of a lead on it right here. Well, here's where it really begins. You have to get the lead starting at this moment. So from here on, he's basically setting up a little bit of a, a lead ahead of this um, wheel so that he can uh, sequence break. You're not supposed to be able to exit the stage at this point. You just don't have enough time to do it. Uh, but he's going to try to open this gap before the wheel gets there. And I got it. Nice. The time pressure on that is way worse than it looks. Especially if you're in a world record run, because it's the last one you have to do before the last boss. And sadly, we're not on pace to get a world record, because my best time is 15.25. So this is the last boss in the game and hopefully she'll give me the pattern that I really want but I want to be able to hit her a few times then I want her to bend down and hopefully I'm in the magic pixel okay I am and there we go so I will do the time now oh. 16, 10, yeah. So out, out of three marathons, that, this is actually my uh, worst time. I've I pulled a 15:30 in best of nest in November. So I mean, I'm kind of satisfied with that. That's better than author's record right yeah. now, actually. But I mean, so yeah. If you uh, if you thought this game was cool, definitely check it out. I mean, it's a small $800 to drop on a card of it. <laughs> I may have to put a bounty on it just to get someone to run it, though. But anyways, thank you for having me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the run. Uh, there's many more to come, so stay tuned. Thank you.